stupidity plus randomness equals smarts. Critical equation for modern cryptography and cyber security. Illustration. Alice and Bob play a game. There are eight bags here. Each bag is marked by a country. And Bob takes some precious ring and puts it in one country or the other, one bag of one country or the other. Alice opens four of those eight bags. If one of those bags has the ring in it, she wins. Not Bob wins. And they keep playing time and again. As they play, they try to outsmart the other. Alice says to herself, Bob is an Italian guy, so he probably will hide the ring in a country called Italy. So that's what I will check. But Bob says, oh, she will think that I am going to hide it here in Italy, so I'm going to hide it in France. And so each of them, Alice and Bob, try to outguess, outthink, outsmart the other. Now suppose they play 50 times, and at the end of these 50 times, Alice wins 45 times, and Bob Five. What does it mean? Alice is smarter than Bob. Is there anything that Bob can do to neutralize Alice's smarts advantage? Yes, there is. What Bob should do is surrender his brain power, his decision making, his attempts to outguess, outsmart Alice and instead invite a little dwarf which is a random number generator a device can be a box that spews out random choices and so, the random number generator, this little dwarf, when it tells Bob, choose Canada, that's what Bob does. Choose Germany, that's what Bob does. Forget what you think. Don't try to outsmart Alice. Simply obey the orders of this random number. And here comes this fundamental law of randomness. By choosing this strategy, instead of consulting his own smarts, Bob will neutralize whatever smarts advantage that Alice has over him. When they are going to play 50, it will be about 25 for her and 25 for Bob. If they play 500, 250, 250. A thousand, more or less 500, 500. Alice can beat Bob. She cannot beat the random number generator. By using this strategy, Bob, armed with randomness, his stupidity plus randomness will equalize Alice's smarts. And that is why a cipher invented by Mr. Werner, Gilbert S. Werner, in 1917, that is based on randomness input to encrypt a message, is unbreakable. NSA in the 2016 cannot crack 
a cipher invented in 1917 because of randomness. And that is why when I write a message like Alice loves Bob, Nancy hates David, and I mix the words randomly, randomly, then nobody will know for sure, unless they have the key, how to unmix those words. When I unmix the random mix of the words, I look at various possibilities that I cannot decide between them. This is the right message. Alice loves Bob and Nancy hates David. But if I have all the words mixed, I can unmix them to Bob loves David and Alice hates Nancy. Or Bob hates David and Nancy loves Alice. Or anything else. Any other combination. And nobody can decide. Unless you have the key. That's the power of randomness. In modern cryptography, we have a message entered into a big box where all the smarts are, all the algorithms, all the complexity that we build with our intelligence. And then we enter a small measure like salt on a salad of randomness and we create the secret. This secret depends on the quality of this smarts. Now, if we are smarter than our adversaries, it works. But one thing we cannot control. Maybe 20 years ago, on the other side, somebody with the mental capacity of an Alan Turing was born and now he works against us. Maybe the smarts that goes into cracking the secret is greater than the smarts that we put here. So maybe someone that we don't like will crack the secret into the message the same way that Alan Turing did it to the Nazis in World War II. And when you look at this and you remember that stupidity plus randomness equals smart. One way to guarantee that no Alan Turing will crack your message is to reduce the reliance on the smarts and increase the reliance on the randomness. More randomness, less smarts, better security. The details the ciphers, the philosophy, coming next.